Hi, I'm Klaas Freitag. Um, I work for our own cloud today, and but I have a long story with Suse, and I took over heavily took over the talk from uh, somebody's whose name I forgot. Uh, he wanted to do this: uh, how to run own cloud on Open Suse, and that's easy enough, so I can do it. Um, so what is it about? Small look on the agenda. Um, actually, I understood the topic like, how can you easily use own cloud on, on OpenSUSE? Um, there are a couple of ways to do that are supported and others not and a bit complicated or not. So we will go through all these and uh, check um, some options you might have. Um, since that is a bit boring, maybe I, I want to take the opportunity to go a bit further and talk about some uh, steps we like to do with own cloud and open source, and I already did, and also maybe name some challenges that we uh, experienced over the last more than four years that I'm with own cloud now. So, how do we run own cloud on an open source server? Um, the server installation of OwnCloud can be, of course, done by a simple tarball installation, similar to what I did in the mid-90s on my LST Linux distribution back in the days, yeah, right? Unpacking a tarball, not working, and so on and so on. Um, I had to learn that web developers like to do that still today, um, yeah. How is it done? You unpack the tab wall, try to configure your web server to where you are, um, do stuff, handle permissions, and that's not really working. It smells. It's a, yeah. We have a lot of doku about that, how you can do it, and um, for some reasons, some people really prefer this way of installations. Um, of course, from the perspective of a proper Linux distributions, we don't uh, recommend it. So what we, of course, want to do is insta install from RPM packages. Um, <laughs> that has also its challenges, because um, packaging web applications is hard. Because um, web developers tend to add a lot of third-party dependencies that are not really properly packaged on, on OpenSUSE or any other Linux distribution. Um, it is difficult to handle all the configuration options. Um, own cloud, especially own cloud server, is running uh, in a lot of different um, configurations, like different databases and, and uh, different memory caches and stuff like that. And if you try to package that properly, you end up with a huge amount of different options and different sub-packages that people need to install to get this or that configuration running. And we tried all that. Jürgen, who was sitting here, was going through a long history of changing and, and fiddling with packages. And we got a lot of uh, bad feedback about that work. So at one point, we went back to a very simple uh, and rather flexible approach. That is, two server packages. Um, they basically just install files to where they belong, like server something, um, and a very minimal configuration option for Apache. And that's the one package that just installs the files. And the other package is uh, including dependencies, specific open source dependencies. Why do we have a package without dependencies? The reason is, in enterprise environments, people um, don't want packages to pull arbitrary uh, dependencies, like they use Nginx and then the package pulls Apache, which is bad, and then the admin uh, has a problem and stuff like that. So for, the, for our enterprise customers especially, we came up with very simple, just file-based uh, packages. So on via um, download own cloud org, there's this page that you probably all know from OBS where you can pick um, the, the packages for the distributions that are important. Um, we use OBS 
from day one to provide uh, packages for customers and for the community. Um, and we, we also have now a lot of experience with cross-platform packaging, which works very nicely. And um, yeah, actually is, I don't, I don't know another way of doing this, this work without uh, OBS. It's uh, actually uh, great. Um, we have these packages at don't download on cloud org, so we're not using the download from OpenSUSE anymore. The reason for that is basically that we wanted to have download numbers of the packages and usage statistics, how many, how many people use which distribution and stuff. And since OBS is not providing this data, we were at some point driven to go away and create our own uh, repository server. Okay, that was so, um, yeah, here is the, the repository setup that we had in OBS. Um, it, is, it was <laughs> also a long learning curve how we can set up all these repositories that we needed. All these are sub-projects of ISV on cloud community. Um, we started over with 4.5, that was when, when I joined on cloud and started the packaging and went over 5 and 6. And created all these major versions um, underneath this um, community project, um, the, all the, the major version numbers plus the testing repository. So users can choose between uh, stable uh, repositories like A2 um, or the nightly builds that we automatically uh, package up and build every night and also the testing uh, releases which are betas and RCs and stuff. Yeah. Of course, this is a workshop. I mean, if you, if you have comments or <laughs> questions or so, just speak up, please. That's, that's cool. So, this is a different story. This is about the Zyn client. The, the Zyn client is a, a, a Qt-based software which needs to be compiled in opposite to the server, which is just plain scripting. Um, and compiling is, is more difficult because it's arch dependent and everything. And um, as you see here, this is a piece of OBS, a screenshot of OBS that didn't fit vertically. So I flipped it and you see all the distributions that we build in, in OBS uh, for customers. That starts with CentOS 6. Yes, we provide a Qt 5 based software on CentOS 6 and also 7 and Debian's and Fedora's and RHEL and up to uh, all flavors of OpenSUSE, of course. So we, we gained a lot of experience with cross-platform building. And I can show how we do it, maybe. Let me check. Unfortunately, my computer was booting the X server. So let's see. Okay. It's not true. Second, um, Graham Jenkins, Ops Integration, um, Templates, Client, two, zero, two. Let's look into the spec file. Um, where is it? I'm sorry, I had that preferred, uh, prepared everything, but because the X server crashed, it's gone away. So, of course, we don't want to, so the, the cross-platform spec files are pretty complex. You know that you need a lot of ifs and, and, and distinctions between uh, is it an own cloud client or not, because as you might know, the, the own cloud client comes white labeled for customers. So you can have, a, for example, CERN has a CERN box. That's not an own cloud client, it's a CERN box. So we have a pretty 
a decent way of, of customizing the whole thing so that it has different logos and different texts, of course, and a different name and safe locations and everything is changing, is changeable. And in addition to that, we have a tool, it's called Own Brander, that gives the customers the opportunity to maintain their brandings by themselves in a web application. Pretty nice customer service that people can use if when they buy a, um, uh, enterprise subscription, they get access to this web tool to uh, maintain the, the branding and also build the clients. So how can we do that? Of course, we don't want to maintain uh, 150 spec files for each of these branding customers. And so we have a little um, machine behind it that takes the branding and the template spec file and uh, mumbles everything together and uh, throws it into an, an OBS. Um, of course, this is not the uh, SUSE OBS anymore, but our private instance, because I got the feeling that we, that we uh, <laughs> yeah, that it's not okay to build so much software on, on OBS um, for uh, commercial customers, and also it, it wouldn't be allowed, I think, from the uh, OBS idea. Um, so, this, um, Templating works with a, with a simple um, templating engine, as you see here. We don't, we don't call it own cloud client, it's called short name client, and this short name template thing is replaced by the actual name. For example, CERNBOX is then short name CERNBOX, and then the package na is named in the end uh, CERNBOX client. Yeah, okay, and this cross-platform spec file, of course, I don't know who, who tries to maintain something cross-platform. You will end up with a lot of statements like here. Long, if CentOS version equals blah, blah, and blah, blah, and blah, blah. Um, so what usually happens is like that you change, uh, have to change provides or requires, package names are different, or features are different, and all kind of that. And then you end up with this pretty complex um, spec file. It looks ugly, it is ugly, but it gives, still provides a lot of power. I mean, we're building hundreds, literally hundreds of packages with this spec file. So it's, it's really powerful. Okay, change. Okay, so um, this is about now the own cloud client. Um, the, the right way to do it, of course, would be to maintain, not, not us maintaining the, the client in our private um, environment, especially about the, the community version, it should be as downstream as possible. So I, t I worked on that for, I don't know, I'm almost a year, I think, but finally, today, I made another pull request to factory so that we have the own cloud client then for SUSE maintained in OpenSUSE factory. Um, if you <laughs> want to help, I'm happy to receive any help because it's not easy to get such a cross-platform uh, spec file into OpenSUSE factory. The, the rules are strict and it's not easy to get through it. Um, this, this, uh, Pull request was already declined, but maybe I, I get it uh, through and then we can, then we will have our ISV own cloud desktop repository that we use for the community builds um, as a devil, pay, uh, devil project for um, the, the client in factory. I personally would say that's very nice. Um, of course, I like the idea of, of using OBS. Um, finally, there's the, the I, I said that we have a white labeling for, for the client. So what we could do is we could create an open SUSE branding of the client so that every user that who installs um, the desktop client from open SUSE gets a green branded open SUSE like looking client. Um, I'm happy to do the technical side, but I'm very bad at, uh, at design and, and stuff and icons and so on. So 
If anybody is interested in, in work on a theming, please contact me and then we cre can create a Suse branding and have a nice uh, branded client on OpenSUSE. Okay. So let's talk about it challenges a bit. Um, building packages is really challenging. <laughs> not only for server, also for client, where we end up with literally hundreds of packages on a ton of, of distributions, and it's really hard to, to get everything right. And you, you always end up with a missing file on Debian, or I don't know, some flag set in the wrong way, and, and the, the build fails, and all these things. So it's really like a, a Sisyphus work to maintain all these uh, these templates uh, to, to create um, the spec files and Debian build instructions. So we don't really have an answer on that yet, how to, to test. I mean, there were attempts to do um, Docker-based install uh, environments where we put the uh, packages and try to install them, see if there are file conflicts and all these things and, and dependencies. That always kind of works, but then it turns out that it's still not enough, so it uh, continues to be hard. Another challenge that we faced is the acceptance of OBS and other distributions um, is very little. So Ubuntu users, who are the, the unfortunately the huge majority of Linux users, they just claim there is no repo. And we continue to say there's the OBS, you can register this uh, download repository, um, you can install, uh, uh, import the key, and then you have a full functional, proper software repository for Ubuntu. And it took us ages to get people used to that, unfortunately. And Debian building in general in OBS is um, pretty challenging because the code that you need in OBS is not compatible to um, Debian upstream uh, or downstream. <laughs> is it? Um, it's not compatible to a Debian downstream packaging. So if you, for example, copy a Debian package from Launchpad into OBS, it will not work. You need to put the files differently and fiddle around and stuff like that. And it's also some, sometimes a bit, um, yes, pearlish magic in, in these conversion scripts. Um, yeah. Okay, and then we had challenges, of course, with rebuild speeds and predictability. Often we have releases where we have to sync up with marketing and release at a certain point of time. And of course, you cannot steer the build service. It's, not, it's simply not the purpose of the build service to provide software at the time marketing wants. I know that, and it's, it's okay, but um, we had uh, challenges with that. Yeah, um, probably there are more. Jürgen, do you want to add something? Yeah, I can, I can give some more details about my contribution to the yes. I, I can give some more details about how the packaging really works if people are interested. So we can, we can do that on the screen if you like, or we can do it offline later. So um, basically this is a call for help. So the best, <laughs> what, what Klaus already tried to announce, uh, what we want to achieve is that more people take care um, about the packages that we have in the build service right now. It's not yet in factory, but it is in our Correct me if I'm wrong. It's in our development, what is it called? Devil project? Our, our own. Oh, submit request. I did the submit request. Submit request is already on the way. Okay. So we have some technical details until it can go into factory. And to be prepared for a good packaging in factory, uh, I would like to invite as many people as possible to look over that and make the package pass all the requested tests. Because currently, uh, what, we, what we have is we support many platforms, but possibly not exactly the way that is required for SUSE Factory. So if there's anybody who wants to help and look there, that's cool. And the other request that I want to add 
is especially for the Debian side, I have a lot of Debian, Debian control, Debian rules, Debian whatever files sitting in the package. And I've never seen such a package with all the Debian configuration go into factory. Maybe there is examples. I would love to know about them and learn how it's probably done. So that's, that's one interesting thing, having a, re a real existing important package in the SUSE factory that is really trying to be cross-platform and even supports the, the other world, not the RPM, but even in Ubuntu world. So if there's any help, let us know. <coughs> All right. Okay, so my last word is Thank you for hosting us on, uh, us on, on OBS. That was for, for own cloud, for the own cloud project, which, which always, so we, we always put a huge value in easy installation and easy running on as many platforms as possible. And that was also only possible because we, we started on OBS and could provide packages uh, widely for a lot of uh, um, systems. We went through a long, <laughs> Uh, so a long way of, of learning with that and some things work nicely, others not so, but in general it has helped us a lot and we even use uh, now an internal build service for our uh, commercial builds. So it's a, uh, OBS in general is a great tool and I, I really like to encourage the OpenSUSE community to continue doing that. It's really great, great piece of software and I really wonder why not more projects jump on it. It's a bit unfortunately. Okay, thank you so much. I hope this talk was meeting your, your expectations. I'm not sure because it was maybe a bit off topic, but if you have questions, just ask now. <laughs> okay, then thank you very much for listening.